My name is Carol. I'm the co-founder and the CEO of CodeSpace. We are a Shopify web solutions agency and we are minority and woman owned. Hi, I'm Mia, CEO of ClickVoyant. It's an analytics software for e-commerce companies to understand their customer behavior inside their merchandising. We are Asian at the same time. No way. <laughs> um, all right. So let me let me first start off by asking you, Carol. Yeah. What do you see e-commerce companies doing that just drive you crazy? Like this is a common mistake. Oh, this is so good. My favorite starts with the sentence, well, my competitor is doing it, so... And then they make us fill the blank as if that's like the biggest motivation for them to do any sort of work is that they're getting burned in the ass because all their friends are doing it. So same thing. Some I would say real. if your friends are, some is real, but we need to look into data. That's why we're yeah. here. Yeah. Well, I've been doing that for 15 years and people care more about what their competitors are friends doing. Are doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I've said actually, those too. Do you know what? You know what I usually do when I bring the data that shows them that they can improve, like say a product detail landing page. I have to go show another company's. Page. <laughs> you see how they're doing it, and it works out. It's we also too. in your data, by the way. No, I know. Mm -hmm. I have to reinforce. Yeah. I think data is hard. Data is hard. It's education. I think it's also a lot of pre-education to the brands and be like, do you know why this is going to bring you value and why we are pushing you to do this for your own good? We want to help you save money, right? You don't want to just do it because your friends are doing it. Like your mom said, if everyone's jumping off the bridge, are you going to do the same thing? Um, the, 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 I know my mom is very threatening. Um, and then, of course, the biggest thing is I would always ask, like, don't you want to put all your eggs in the right basket? So when it comes to web development planning, I feel like if you don't have data, you're just flying blind. Oh, yeah. But there's, I mean, there are some companies that do it well, even without it. Like when you're, I guess, you know, we had a liquor brand that was in pipe for a long time and are still in. This is like year three of them being in our pipe. And their uh, leadership was like, well, when you're fat, dumb, and happy, and your margins are 80%, you don't really need to be data-driven. And I'm like, I get it. But it's not true for most, like, Shopify merchants who are just starting to grow. You know mm, what I mean? Mm, mm. Like, you have you had a customer that we talked to recently that was just like, oh, yeah, we're, our D2C site was our primary thing, and mm -hmm. now we're growing, and now we can see that the Amazon thing is growing, too, and now... I feel like we should be focusing on that. What yeah. Do you think, what do you think about that? I think every brand has a different strategy. Um, and you're so right. The ones that are having 80% margin, man, I want to be there right now. I don't know if anybody I know is at 80% margin. Um, but yeah, I mean, for I, I mean, I, I think my question goes back to you, Mia. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you've seen brands making, even with data in front of them? Well, there are like two two things that I see. One is the like just the gospel acceptance of best practices is what we should be doing as a company. So it's like, oh well, we're adhering to all the user experience best practices. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, good for you. That means you're mm -hmm. not innovative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. means you're just doing what every other site is doing. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, the reason why I am in data analytics is because I love to research why people do things. Oh, they mm -hmm. click here. Oh, but they got stopped up there. Oh, they abandoned at this space. Why do they do that? Like, mm -hmm. I just have a natural curiosity about people. And I think that that's where an analyst mind goes is like the why. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you want to test. Like if you yeah. are a true analytical mind, you want to put the testing lab coat on. And a lot of brands don't always want to do that. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. there is this kind of weird, um, weirdly a competition. Resistance. Yeah, like between, like, like somehow creative and brand can't live in the same space with data and research. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I mm -hmm. think that innovation 
and math and art all live together. It's not, they're not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the biggest thing. Like two is like one, the first mistake is we're, we're adhering to best practices. And so we're fine. Mm -hmm. The second is, oh, well, you know, I just not, I'm not, I'm, I'm a creative maker. I'm a maker. Mm. I'm not, I'm creative. I don't really listen to data. Yeah. But there's a, there's a third. Um, and that is if you're looking at any data at all as a merchant, there is a giant gravitational pull to paid media data uh. instead of looking at your sites mm -hmm. when it matters. And like, I think people forget too, user experience is also a moving target. Just because you're using the best user experience or best practices that you are looking at right now, it doesn't mean a quarter later people don't change, right? You still have to refresh. You still have to base on your user activities to update your site accordingly. And I think people forget about that and stay stagnant. Um, I think that's also a reason why, besides you're saying art, creative, right? Um, web development is also a sector that people need to be educated on. Like, what, where do I really invest the, the money and how much should I be investing in when it comes to digging up data and utilizing data to do web development? Like, those things are things that I'm always trying to convince my brands and merchants to look into. And it's, it could be a tough conversation. Yeah, in a way, like, your business and my business are like the stepchild of all the digital <laughs> like oh yeah. well we're gonna we're gonna like get the site up and when we're getting the site up and launching it then it's like priority child number one right yeah. but then like yeah. when it's yeah. live and up and running now oh i'm gonna focus all my attention on paid media and then yeah. the website kind of like falls but... to the wayside it's like oh mm -hmm. that's we'll there. Fix it. It's we have it yeah. we have it it's yeah. fine oh we turn yeah. on google analytics it's fine we have it mm -hmm. but then like we're out here just gonna be like no these are things you need to nurture. Money's, money's on the table, guys. Pick that up. Totally. I. Well, well, okay. God. Let's go back for a second. Tell me about your. Tell me about your background. Like how my did background you get into web. Oh. Um. It all started with a green card. Uh. Mama's got to stay here in America. <laughs> I'm Australian and Taiwanese, so I came here when I was 19, and I really, I truly, really was. My goal was to stay in the States um, and sticking with the major that I went to, um, and and I stumble upon e-commerce, and I've always been in fashion e-commerce for seven, eight years. Um, that was my background. Um, so my partner, Tasha, and I, we used to work in an e-commerce agency that learned, the, we learned the beginnings of the ends of e-commerce journey from, like, warehouse fulfillment all the way into in, uh, back end and front end developing to photo shoots and how the content on photography actually fits into the e-com sites and then, you know, uh, I bet marketing. you were like a damn they, slave. I was a slave, all right, with no green card, all right? <laughs> like young, young woman agency, like I know this, I know this story. You know. Where you're just like, you know. I'm doing this, I'm doing the product shoots, I'm doing this, I'm oh. going everywhere. Like, and you think it's so sexy because you're working for who? <laughs> I was in the warehouse picking orders and but but because I did all that I know exactly who's working and what system they are using and that's also the reason why Codespace got you know built was because we knew the in and outs and we want to cut some corners and we want to make it more efficient and we know where to save budget um, so that's kind of how I entered into the e-com world um, and I think I'm specifically um, interested in operations. I think if you are able to be more efficient in processing um, kind of your day-to-day -day work, that is where you can save your budget and be more efficient in scaling and growing your business. Um, but yeah, I think this whole thing about kind of talking to the clients about building their brand, those are kind of my exciting points. I love talking to new brands and asking them like, hey, where can we help? You know, And I think that's mm -hmm. where ClickBoy and us come in. Well, and what does Codespace do specifically? 
we are a web solutions company where we develop bug fixes. We also do um, performance audit. And now that we're powered by ClickVoyant, we also are data um, analytics driven. We use your software to kind of give guidance to our clients to understand where they should put their money at when it comes to development. Um, we also have UX UI team in-house. We do wireframes. Um, basically, all in all, when it comes to Shopify development, including app integrations and customization and themes. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. what does a what does a e-commerce company like? How much should they be investing in that? And then, how much do they actually? What do you find? Love that question. Love that question. I will put a number next to it for you as a numbers girl. So studies have shown. E-commerce store owners who are maintaining their website, just like no bugs, making sure people can check out. I'm not doing anything like you said. Everything is good. Don't touch it anymore. They spend around 5% of their annual revenue invested in web development. Just development. I'm not talking about paid. I'm not talking about marketing. Just some developer making up their website, keeping it clean. But if you're willing to scale, you're really looking into building the best features and you're about, and I want to say from my experience, they're about a million to five million. Those are the GMVs that people are really looking into that are like, oh, I'm paying attention to web development. They spend around eight to 10% of their annual revenue on web development. So that's mm. kind of the sweet point here. So if you're making a million, think about how much that is. It really, really is not much on a monthly basis, but that's how much you can actually grow your business if you dedicate your time to the right web solutions company. Well, that's interesting. I mean, we see a lot of, you know, Shopify merchants, obviously, mm -hmm. they're like, something's wrong with my data. I don't know what's going on with Google Analytics. It's going to my store. And we usually give them like, okay, well, here's how to fix it. Here's mm -hmm. how to fix your data. And there's one element of fixing Google Analytics, which include what's called the data layer. And when we give that to them, they're just like, we don't have developers. You don't have, and like, we're, I'm talking about companies that are making like a million dollars a month mm -hmm. in sales. They don't have developers. So why do you think that there are companies that big that don't have their go-to resources? Because we're the plumbers. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, developers, again, it, that's what we are talking about earlier is that education piece is so important. People don't usually think about developers. They always think about visual and creative. It's similar mm. to kind of building a house. I always use that as an analogy. You don't really <laughs> call the plumber until shit hits the fan, all right? And you know that you should be having maintenance. You should have somebody come in to see if you have termites on a yearly basis, especially those who own a house. You probably know these are maintenance you should mm. be doing to make sure that your house is standing up right. You're By the time you found out. Right now. <laughs> I see your I eyes like, am I, should I? <laughs> I just bought my first true. house and I'm like, I'm like, I'm getting nervous. My armpits are starting to sweat. <laughs> should I call a plumber? But that's usually what, what I would say is that you need to fix the problem before it exists. And before it even is showing up signs, there should be an audit for you to do on a quarterly basis, especially if you're making a million a, a month, like you said. Mm -hmm. Those guys should be focusing on making sure the bounce rates are low, making sure that customer journey is smooth, and always checking out the data and pulling in the reports on a monthly basis. Have someone dedicated. You have a million dollars a month. You should be dedicating somebody on your e-com site to make sure it's clean working right right but again when it comes to developer people leave that to the very end to like oh, let's just wait till shit really hits and then see what's gonna happen but by that time it's 10x you're spending so much more than you should yeah and then yeah you have to re-theme redesign they're like oh my god why is it so much i was like well if you came to me like five months ago before you ran that big campaign and throw all those apps up there this would have been like 10 times cheaper girl so, I feel like you're telling the analytics story. <laughs> well, like, <you're laughs> yeah, maintenance. The same story. Because yeah. when I was a director of analytics, like, you know, in the agency side, when you're really good at talking about data, you're the one who gets to go to the pitch. Yes. So everybody, I that. would get, 
Yeah, I would get paraded around. I'd be like, oh, go get, go and win this pitch. Go and win that pitch. Go and win that pitch. And ultimately, when the brand saw the price tag, because analytics is expensive, there's not enough of us. Yeah. Not enough of us analysts. And so it's got to be like agency side, it's $350 an hour. The mm. brand would ultimately say, mm, no, thank you. <laughs> We'll just yeah. we'll just take the media campaign, but right? we can only afford the media campaign. Yeah. And they're like, we'll figure out the analytics later. And they never do. Never, never. And then they only do when something's broken, which is why, you know, I mean, it's in some way there's like a job security in all the broken Google Analytics implementations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, nobody knows GA4. <laughs> People just be coming out of the woodwork. Um, but for real, like, it, I mean, if when you're doing it for 15 years, it just feels like, what the hell, again? You're calling me yeah. again after it's broken, not when I could have helped you before. So I yeah. feel you. It's, it's like, it's like in some way, like, we, we remained the immigrants. <laughs> Why are we still here convincing them we're important? <laughs> like, look at me, mom. <laughs> mom, I'm important. Put me at the table. <laughs> I feel you. This is exactly why we do Asian bob boss testing. <laughs> We're trying to tell you, if you value us, we would take you to a new level, okay? Yes. Just... Why do you think all those white guys marry those Asian girls? <laughs> <laughs> to make superhuman babies. I firmly believe Hapa babies are superhumans. <laughs> They're always gorgeous. They're always smart. Don't you, didn't you marry a... I did. She, you did. Yeah, it's a so superhuman baby. That's why your kid is in the math math lead. Yes, it's true. It's also why I, I, I can I can take all my uh, frustration on um, white privilege on my husband. I have an outlet, which is How nice. Dare you? Oh my gosh. Okay, so well, all right, well, let so... me let me let me ask you this then. Okay, quick question okay. for you, and I think yeah. it's important for the audience to know. What are your whys when you make when you build Clickpoint? <sighs> Well, I mean, I think it's pretty similar. I mean, I, you know, the real why, okay, so the history of like, the, sh the brief history of me is that, you know, I was pretty much an analytic since people could count anything uh, on the internet. And what started out as this, like, I thought this was going to be awesome because you were going to be able to like, see how people responded to marketing messaging and design. Um, and while that was true, I think that the, you know, after you could start tracking what used to be called web analytics, now there was like media and, mm -hmm. um, and lots of it. And uh, then there was programmatic. And I think just when you start to spend like millions and millions of dollars a month, you just start to like media analytics became the end all be all so mm -hmm. much though that the web analytics association changed their name to digital analytics association and everything just got kind of watered down in what we were doing yeah. like the research part the understanding why people behave the way they behave mm -hmm. became watered down and the word insight started to mean nothing mm -hmm. basically it's like too much info know, there's too much information mm -hmm. um, when Google says like, oh, this is your insight and it's like a chart that goes up into the right or the chart mm -hmm. that says, well, visitors from Canada increase 30%. Like, so what? Who cares? Mm -hmm. Right? Like mm -hmm. for me and always this has been true since MySpace was the primary social media My platform. Space. Yes. Like as, as heavy as it was to load, like. I was into analytics because I wanted to help brands understand their customers mm -hmm. and why and their and their reasons their why. Mm -hmm. But my job instead became uh, oh, you know, prove that we got as many hits as we had promised. Prove that we'd spent this much, right? Build this dashboard. Um, don't tell the client that. Tell them this. Oh, can we just segment that out? You know, it's like I was instead mm -hmm. of this research component, I was like basically uh, 
the data plumber. <laughs> I was, I was, I was also like, combined. the two things. I was a data plumber. Oh, that data's mm -hmm. broken. This one flatlined. Go in, like, mm -hmm. you know, put something in the code and fix the tag. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. while that is fun to me, um, the real value of it is to know why customers do what they do. Yeah. And nobody's doing that anymore. Everybody's just mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, here's your dashboard. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I built ClickMoyant as the AI that will tell you what your customers are doing, mm -hmm. why they're buying things, what features mm -hmm. they're interacting with, and does it correlate to them buying something? Are you mm -hmm. delighting them and surprising them with these features, or are you just getting in their way when just mm -hmm. coupon, coupon, spin the wheel, and mm -hmm. that does happen. So, mm -hmm. you know, these Shopify merchants they, or any merchant, really, they don't know much better about what works or how user experience really impacts their customer loyalty, hence revenue. And so that's what ClickPoint does. Like, I think, you know, my feeling for the future is that dashboards are going to go the way of the dodo. I just don't think it's a modern solution. It's stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I built hundreds, Carol, hundreds of yeah. dashboards. Yeah. And... Dashboards doesn't mean anything until it actually tells you exactly what you need to know. And that's also why people go, hey, Mia, can you tell me what that means? And what is this? What is all that? Or people simply get overwhelmed and be like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I, I don't think that's important, right? We'll just do what we know what to do. Oh, they get sh they into it. They just shut down most of the yeah. time. I mean, yeah. you don't have Too much. so. And the big miss here, and this is why I think we're doing this, and you can confirm. But the big miss is if you don't understand the data and you decide to shut down, because I just can't look at this or I don't understand it and it's overwhelming, then there, you're missing the opportunities to like unlock the chi mm -hmm. in your merchandising. So like in the example where, and I know we're going to get into this, but like somebody who's too, like whose website that we tested mm -hmm. for Ocean Salmon, mm -hmm. like hadn't even realized that by putting all these like badges around the add to cart that it confused the add to cart button. Yeah. Yeah. Could have thought about that, but you wouldn't have known until you see the data. <laughs> No, right. And then, you, mm -hmm. you know, the data gives you an opportunity to, like, look at it in a new way. But, yeah, I mean, the real, real, that's a 30% increase in revenue for that company. Yeah. And if yeah. Shopify merchants, and I keep saying that, but if any merchant knew that that kind of money could be unlocked from a simple user experience change, mm -hmm. everybody would be doing it. And right now, not enough people are doing it. Nobody understands it. Also, why we're doing Asian boss testing. You're welcome, well, and guys. Also... Whoever's watching this. <laughs> and... Always prioritize insights that customers is queen. Please. How dare you? <laughs> Follow us for more insights and we will be doing a lot more case studies and specific um, cases for you to see how we do A-B testing, how we pick them and how do they win and what are some great conversion stories and AOV increase stories that these e-commerce store owners will tell you. And of course, number two, if you like to get involved and want to be part of our Asian boss testing scenario, give me a social security number and I'll tell you everything. <laughs>